Toye, and this is Buckingham News. Students from the medical school are taking action to set up their own first response team to attend emergencies in and around Buckingham. Initiated by student Matt Beck, the group is attempting to reduce the time it takes for ambulances to arrive to help people in need of medical assistance and to potentially save lives. James Lucina has met the team. Buckingham is fortunate to be surrounded by countryside, but this means that it is a distance away from some necessities. It takes 20 minutes for an ambulance to arrive from Mills and Keynes University Hospital, and for some emergencies this can be too late. Students who will have received training to become community first responders will be ready on location to intervene before ambulances arrive. We're a group of medical students, so we're the kind of people who are going to be, we're going to be doing this job in the future, so um, administering healthcare to people all around the country, and it just seems to be a great way to practice and help in the local community. We're designating an area which is a 10 minute drive to a conference from here and if anyone in that vicinity would call an ambulance that required immediate response which is known as Priority 1, then we'd get dispatched as well as the ambulance to get on scene before the ambulance would so that we can provide emergency life-saving care. The students have been supplied with a car and sets of kits containing oxygen cylinders and defibrillators. Responders will receive special training to cover cases that require immediate attention such as cardiac arrests or burns. So to become a community first responder it's a two-day intensive training course that's run by the South Central Ambulance Service. So they come to the medical school itself um, and they run through different scenarios after going through the theory behind so who will be able to take part? Currently the, uh, the only people that can do the community first responders are first year medical students. Uh, obviously that's just for now while we trial it, uh, but it's been really successful so far. So uh, hopefully in the near future we're going we're gonna to open it up to all of the students that are willing. With the risk of cuts in the NHS and the possible decline in ambulance response times, hopefully the initiative by the University of Buckingham's medical students will be an incentive for others to follow across the country to help victims far away from hospitals. This is James Vazina for Buckingham News. Buckingham had a real treat last Saturday when Maids Morton Hall hosted its 2015 Summer Fate. The Fate raised funding and awareness for the Stroke Association and Carers MK. We sent Alex Shattuck to go and hook a duck. Oh, I don't know, but I've always loved the idea of summer and sun and all things hot. Maids Morton Hall held Buckingham's annual summer fete this week and invited all of Buckingham's residents to enjoy a day out in the sun. The fete hopes to bring together the whole community for a day of summery goodness in aid of the Stroke Association, with all proceeds going to charity. It's a very, very important charity. Um, you know, a lot of us are going to have a stroke in the future more money is needed to actually, you know, eradicate that or make life better once you've had a stroke. The event was set up to bring awareness for Stroke Association. A stroke is a brain attack. It happens when the blood supply to part of your brain is cut off. Strokes affect approximately 110,000 people a year in the UK and are the third largest cause of death. Last year we managed to help 85,000 people um, so the money that's raised from the FATE will help us to continue to do this. They help us funding research, uh, leaflets, so that if somebody has a stroke, then they're getting the best um, information that they need, um, and also funding our helpline as well. The FATE included ice cream, pony rides, hook a duck, live music and entertainment, and Staff Olympics. Before the night was through. Whether you're weighing a cake, riding a pony, or simply eating a hot dog, make the most of what's left of the summer. This is Alex Shattuck, Walking on Sunshine for Buckingham News. I can't believe we're doing the story yet, but how early is too early to start thinking about Christmas? Residents of Buckingham have been taken to Facebook to complain about local shops starting to sell Christmas goods before August is out. Lisa Collins went to find who has been naughty and who has been nice. Already. With Christmas being one of the biggest events of the social calendar, it is something that dwells in the back of everyone's mind all year round. But a recent complaint on Facebook triggered us to investigate how people really feel about shops starting to sell Christmas goods so early. 
So, is Christmas just around the corner, or is Santa still sleeping? Let's ask the residents of Buckingham. When do they start thinking about Christmas? Two days. <laughs> <laughs> For me, start thinking about Christmas. End of November? No earlier than that, there's no need, otherwise it just goes on for ages. Yes, everyone wants to be early, it's quite expensive, you know, you want to get everything out of the way, but I think I think before Halloween is just ridiculous. So. I think September is way too early, but sort of October, November is fine. So there you have it, it is too early for Christmas. We also asked Santa what he thought when he refused to comment and threatened to put me on the naughty list. This has been Lisa Collins for Buckingham News, asking Santa baby to hurry down the chimney tonight. In other news, a paint spillage which occurred on Morton Road over two weeks ago has yet to be cleaned up by the local council. The accident happened on the 5th of August when the council were painting the lines. This recent rain may have lessened the effect of the spill somewhat, but the spill remains an eyesore for residents of the area. The University of Buckingham Student Union organised a series of events as part of RAG Week. The widespread annual charity and fundraising movement is part of university culture around the UK. The events at Buckingham included a barbecue, karaoke night, sponge throw and a clubbing trip. Funds raised from the events will be donated to the Hart Foundation and the University Medical Department for the purpose of medical research. A spendthrift, a trader and a queen. Marie Antoinette is one of the most famous figures of French history and her taste of fashion and art are still remembered today. Spectators were given an insight to this particular queen's lifetime in a lecture by Dr. Barbara Lassick this Tuesday. Maria Brito Barrero has the reports. As part of the concert and lecture series at the Ian Ferber Lecture Hall, Dr. Barbara Lassick gave a visual narrative into the extravagant lifestyle of Marie Antoinette at the Palace of Versailles. Dr. Lassick provided an insight into the Queen's fondness of fashion, luxurious habits, and a focus on the importance of her artistic legacy. Marie Antoinette was arguably the most famous Queen of France. Um, she was certainly one of the most important figures associated with uh, Versailles. The lecture also included the history of Marie Antoinette's family, the early stages of her marriage to Louis XVI, and how she broke the fashion barriers of her time. She certainly was the queen of fashion. She was the queen of taste, of good taste. She um, created one apartments at Versailles uh, but of course what fascinates people is the fact that she had a very tragic ending. Marie Antoinette continued to play this essential role in the development of the Palace of Versailles until her death when she was executed by guillotine in front of a cheering crowd. This is Maria Brito for Buckingham News. Students were left reading last week when it was revealed that a job advertised by the careers department was in fact a scam. The job, an administrative assistant position at a local design firm, was advertised by the careers department in an email. We sent Rebecca Burka down to investigate. The job advertised 20 hours a week of assistant work, answering phones, sending emails and inputting data. It offered a salary of £15 an hour, which is double the UK average salary of £7.51 for an assistant. It soon became clear that the position was not all it seemed, with the company advertised having no online presence and providing this false address. The position was revealed to be a scam last week in an email sent to students, but how do those who applied for the position feel about this scam? Once I didn't hear back um, for about five days, I uh, checked online about, the, um, uh, about what the uh, job was about, and I found the same job application form on... Um, uh, a few other university websites and I found from that that it was probably a scam. The career service were unable to give us an interview. However, they warned students not to cash in any checks they may have received from the company. This is Rebecca Barker at Buckingham News. Of course, the best way to avoid being scammed for jobs is to set up your own business. Last Wednesday, guest speaker Terry Forsey came to Buckingham to give a lecture. He spoke about what the key factors were to run a successful sales and marketing company. It's a competitive market to crack, and so what does it take to stand out amongst the crowd? We sent Satoyan Wanko down to get to business. 
Terry Fossey Consulting is a specialist sales and marketing consultancy helping smaller software and technology businesses run successful sales and marketing campaigns. Founded in 2001, Terry Fossey Consultancy provides high-value bespoke sales and marketing services to small to medium-sized software and technology companies. Terry has spent over 30 years working worldwide as a sales and marketing focus director within the software industry. His experience is with small and medium-sized companies where he has repeatedly wrestled with the challenges of growth. As a non-executive director, Terry specializes in helping build shareholder values and exit planning. Terry has worked with many directors who struggle to find ways to improve their sales and marketing and grow their software businesses. I, I started my first business when I was 26. Um, I've set up and run companies for many, many years. Um, I now run a business that helps and advises small owner-managed software companies to get them off the ground and to get them to grow and get them to be successful. That. Um, the most common thing that people do is they try and sell what the software does. And nobody's interested in your software. And nobody's interested in what the software does. What they're interested in is what the software will do for them. And if you spend your time showing them what the software does and describing the features of the software, you will fail as a, as, a, as a business. You've got to map your software onto the customer and you've got to describe what you can do for that customer and you've got to describe how you can help that customer. So let's take inspiration from Terry Fossey and improve our charms and charisma. This is Sotaya Wanko for Buckingham News. Nobody should ever be persecuted for their beliefs. But unfortunately, some still face bullying and humiliation for the way they dress or the music they listen to. To combat this, Monday was International Day Against Intolerance, Discrimination and Violence based on musical preferences, lifestyle and dress code. Sanakaula has a story. In 2007, Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend were attacked and beaten in Rosendale, Lancashire. Sophie subsequently died from her injuries. The motive for the attack? Sophie and her boyfriend were gods. That senselessness has led to August 24th, the anniversary of Sophie's death, being commemorated as the International Day Against Intolerance, Discrimination and Violence based on musical preferences, lifestyle and dress code. We asked local Buckingham residents how this had an effect on them. Um, I have problems. I have people shout at me when I go past bus stops. I go to places like Manchester. I go anywhere. I've, I've decided that I'm not going to be held in the boundaries of what people expect others to be like. I want to be me and I will express that. Music controls the gravity of our emotions, but should we be punished for the music we listen to? Moral panics have often been based around music. In fact, um, Stanley Cohen, his definitive work, Folk Devils and Moral Panics, it was all about music. He went from Teddy Boys in the 1950s, which was all about rock and roll, through to the Mods and Rockers, which was all about um, rock and roll changing into um, guitar bands in the early 1960s. He went through punk, he went through rave music, he went through Britpop, it's all about the music. I don't really care for that type of thing. Uh, I feel like everyone is entitled to their opinion. Everyone has like the freedom of choice to choose with music. It's an art, it's abstract, you don't have to be defined by your music. So there's an opportunity today to listen to a genre of music we've never heard before. To chat with someone outside our clique. Or to rise above our labels and comfort zones. This is Sano Rekka Kola, Buckingham News. Now over to sports with Philip Joss. Thank you, Dolly. The University of Buckingham had their last pre-season game against Silverstone FC on Friday, which marked the last of the pre-season games. Though playing in their away kit due to the mix-up in the washing of the kits, the team strolled confidently out onto the pitch, hoping for their much-needed first win. Jason Dunn was watching. The last pre-season match between University of Buckingham FC and Silverstone kicked off to a disappointing start for Buckingham, with the Silverstone scoring their first goal within the first 10 minutes. The ball stayed firmly on Buckingham's side of the pitch for the first half of the game, seeing Silverstone prove their might as a local team. Before the first half was over, Silverstone managed to get in two more goals scored by Martin Blackwell at number 9 and Bobby Brown at number 7. The second half of the game saw an improvement for Buckingham, getting closer to the goal each time with a more cohesive team effort. Unfortunately, these efforts were just too little too late, 
and the match ended with a Silverstone victory of 3-0. Today's game proved that Buckingham are capable of major losses, but still coming back strong with determination for the coming season. We couldn't cross the gap between the defenders and the attackers, um, so the other team had a lot of space to do their runs and make their passes. Another training, not another two training sessions uh, in the next week, where we can um, improve that, and then we have the first game of the season next Saturday. Today may have been a defeat for the Buckingham team, but their strength and skill may prove enough to improve their performances for the upcoming season. This has been Jason Dunn for Buckingham News. One of the university's best kept secrets are the martial arts sessions that take place every Tuesday night, hosted by World United Martial Arts. Students from Buckingham and residents of the surrounding area have been training their chi in these sessions. Jovan Djordjevic has the story. Every Tuesday from 7.30 till 9 p.m., martial arts sessions are held at the OTM. While other students might do weightlifting or team sports, these students train with a personal trainer, learning the arts of kung fu, kickboxing and taekwondo. The sessions have been going since 1984 and are held in Buckingham and Milton Keynes. They teach a variety of physical arts, from core strength training, to mental conditioning, to learning how to use weapons properly. We've been here um, since 1984, and the University actually asked us to come here. And the aim really is to try and help the student to be able to concentrate and focus more on their studies. That's what they have to help, you know, to bring, you know, the concentration, multitasking, and also fitness, you know, very alert mind and body. The sessions are free, and we encourage all students who are interested in participating to come down and get involved. This is Jovan Djordjevic reporting for Buckingham News. And now, back to the studio. Bacon, mmm, bacon. It is one of the human race's favorite foods. From the full English breakfast to unique and delicious desserts, bacon is history's most celebrated food. So, to celebrate Bacon Day, we send Leila Aysadeen to cook up a special meal. You will need one chicken breast fillet, a pinch of salt, one mozzarella ball, six rashes of streaky bacon, two teaspoons of pesto, one tablespoon of olive oil. Last Wednesday marks Bacon Day, and what better way to celebrate it for those bacon lovers with a scrumptious yet simple dish. Today we'll be cooking chicken wrapped in bacon with a surprise centre. Firstly, you want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 180 if you have a fan oven. Secondly, you want to take your breast fillet and slice in the centre, not all the way, creating a butterfly effect for the stuffing. And now you want to slide the mozzarella inside the chicken breast pocket. Next, you want to take two teaspoons of basil pesto and just spread it on top of the mozzarella. Now this is the fun part. You want to take your chicken breast and delicately place it on top of the bacon strips. There you go. Now we're going to wrap the chicken and then we want to season it just a little bit with some salt okay and a little bit of olive oil and now you're going to place it in the middle shelf of your oven and leave it in there for just 20 minutes Simply serve the chicken with a side of your choice. I have chosen peppery rocket. Mmm, so simple yet so delicious. Now try it yourself. This is Leila Esteem reporting for Buckingham News. A rare albino wallaby has been spotted hopping around a cornfield near the village of Hanslope. Last week a group of hikers found it munching away at leaves before bounding away into the distance. So, why is the wallaby? Holly Knowles went to see if she could find this rare animal. Okay, so right now we are on a mission to try and find the wallaby um, in Hanslope. So we're driving around Hanslope looking in all the fields. <laughs> so we're still trying to find the wallaby. Still driving around Hanslope. Oh, there it is! Oh no! Oh, that wasn't it. Sheep. 
Experts believe the animal is a Bennett's wallaby that is traditionally found on the island of Tasmania, near Australia. So what does Northamptonshire have to offer a rare animal that is over 9,000 miles away from home? It could just be the great food. Some locals believe the wallaby has escaped from an animal sanctuary that shut down in Western Underwood. It's a small village about six miles away. There was a small animal sanctuary that shut down. And apparently he just let them go. I've heard about it, yes, on the Hansard website. But I will keep my eye open if I do, I'll let you know. Yeah, quite common. It's quite, quite a lot of people have seen it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's over there. Oh, it's over there. It's, it's over great. There. So we searched. And searched. And searched. So we're using nuts and berries to see if we can try and find the albino wallaby and entice it out wherever it might be. We think it could be in here. Come on. Unfortunately, due to the weather, we have not been able to spot the wallaby. But keep your eyes peeled, everybody, for the albino wallaby that will be hopping around the area. This is Holly Knowles reporting for Buckingham News. Thank you for watching Buckingham News. We'll see you next week.